All right, so this video is all basically about carbohydrate intake, what's the optimal? Now, this new paper came out by Tim Podlegar, who's like chief nutritionist before hands grow, and quite a big name in um, sort of sports nutrition. Anyway, just get straight to it um, about why I think it's useful, this, this article, and then also maybe some limitations. So obviously, the reason that I've made this video is all about how much carbs you can have. So this basically says you can get up to 120 grams an hour um, compared to 90 grams an hour if you change the ratio. So traditionally, people would say there was the two to one ratio where you'd have like um, two lots of glucose to fructose. Um, traditionally, people would use maltodextrin as glucose, mainly because it's a lot more soluble, so you, like it's a lot easier to get it to dissolve in water um, in comparison to sort of just pure glucose. Um, and their aim was basically to see, can you do 120 grams an hour, um, but in a different ratio, so 0.8 fructose, one glucose. So close to closer to one to one really um so there are 11 participants they're quite well trained you can see vo2 max 63 is high um and then their gas exchange threshold which i think is like vt1 which is like sort of like i'm not actually 100 percent sure on this bit um but anyway basically they are quite strong and they're riding like a tempo which was about 260 watts which we'll see in a minute um and then this is basically just what they're saying so the way they tracked it was using carbon 13 isotopes which is quite standard um, and anyway, then basically the point of this study was the results. So they said there was, there was a higher exogenous carbohydrate oxidation rate. So basically the carbs they consumed, there was a higher rate when they consumed more carbs, which is obvious. However, the thing that the limitation of the study is that the endogenous carbohydrate oxidation rate. So like the carbs already have in your body, it didn't increase. Now that is or didn't change sorry at all and that is probably why this study is weird because the reason most of the time that you consume loads of carbs is that you'd spare your glycogen so then like you know at the end of the race you'd have more muscle glycogen um which is why i think i'm going to go into this this article a little bit more um in a minute but first i'm going to show basically if you want to do 120 grams an hour what you should do is probably not buy any sports drinks and just buy sugar so we look, google sugar composition sugar is made of sucrose and you're like nice and then you're like what's sucrose sucrose is literally one-to-one -one glucose to fructose so step one i would highly recommend if you want to do this just use sugar you might be like oh i don't want to use sugar you know what this stress says yeah okay sugar's not perfect because it can be hard to dissolve i will give you that if you find it really hard to dissolve then use more seduction and fructose but otherwise if you don't find it too hard to dissolve like in a bottle 100 grams and like 500 ml is sort of okay. 120 is a bit tougher, but can be definitely be done. But I would definitely recommend using sugar. Um, it is really good. And as you've seen the data, okay, you could say it's 20% different, one to 0.8 and one to one, but generally I find it is good stuff. Now we're gonna get into the article, um, read the actual whole thing. Um, most of it, we're just gonna skip through. The introduction is not crazy useful, to be honest. Um, it's more just about like how the study was set up, which is always interesting to see how they've done it. So you can see it's 11 men, which is always like not great in some ways. Um, always interesting to have not just men doing the study and just to see if it overlaps. I mean, normally you'd expect them to, but unless you test it, you wouldn't know. Um, so, yeah, you can see here that sort of like uh, what what numbers they were doing. Um, so they're, they're pretty strong people, to be fair, um, like definitely decent. And they sort of wrote it like 250, 260 watts, which was going to get into in a bit. Um, so you can see experimental design, they basically had like overnight fast and then they cycled 180 minutes at the intensity equivalent of 95% of um, this threshold. But basically um, it was about 250 watts. So you can see here they were they were riding um, about 256 watts um, plus or minus 16 watts. So again, like a decent intensity for these people, like probably mid, mid to upper zone three, if you're going on like a normal FTP sort of style of... Uh, of zones, but nothing crazy. And I think this might be um, an interesting reason to uh, say why the endogenous carbohydrates didn't change. Um, so what do they actually drink? This is a good point. So they had 2.3 liters of a test beverage and had 270 grams of fructose and maltodextrin or 360 grams of fructose and maltodextrin. So again, you can see like, when I was saying you can put 100 ml in the bottle with sugar, like it is, sorry, 120 in 500 ml, like that is quite a lot. Like they're using definitely a lot more liquid um, which probably will help to absorb it. But often, you know, if you're in a race, you just, just can't carry that much around. Um, you know, it might not necessarily be practical. Um, however, they're also allowed to drink some water as well, which is fair enough. Um, so anyway, they basically analyzed it using the breath and then there were some calculations to 
do fat oxidation rates and carbohydrate oxidation rates. Um, so the results, uh, again, not too interesting, like they've already been said in the abstract, so that we don't need to do that. The discussion is really where it's interesting, because obviously these guys know significantly more about uh, this than myself, and interesting to see what they think, why they think, sorry, that it didn't increase. Um, so, so you can see the results reject the second hypothesis as high exogenous carbohydrate oxidation rates like don't change the endogenous, which is which is odd. So you can see here there's like the blood glucose levels and blood lactate levels um across the two different trials. Um so you can see like the 90 grams an hour. It's not it's not crazy different, like it is higher, but it's not like bonkers higher um across the board. Um so the reason that basically is just the, the reason they're saying it's so important to have carbohydrate is because they wanted to ensure that um, you can keep doing your exercise. Now, I think this is where it's going to be an interesting point, um, which is the fact that maybe the intensity wasn't high enough. Um, so you can see, like, they used to think that it was the, there was the limitation with the transport, which was fine. Um, but if we scroll down even more um, over here, this is this is the point here where they're basically saying, like, they just don't really know why it's happened um, and why people reckon you know, why, why it doesn't spare glycogen. I think maybe, maybe the reason it is was because the intensity isn't high enough. That was my thinking was that if the intensity isn't high enough, then, you know, you're not gonna, you're not gonna need to burn the extra glycogen. Like you, if obviously your body is going to be like, well, I've got it in the bloodstream or I can get it out of the liver stores, which is like, obviously it's going to use the bloodstream. So I think the conclusion from this probably, um, this study is that it has to be a real high intensity for 120 grams an hour to really make sense. So I think the point would be is like, if you're doing enough intensity that you think I need 120 grams an hour because I need to burn more carbs, then I think it definitely makes sense um, to do it. And then, but the counterpoint is why wouldn't you do it? And that's my point. My point is like, you might as well do 120 grams an hour, even if you think it's not gonna spare my liver glycogen that much. I feel like it, it, it's not gonna like be a downfall as long as your stomach can handle it. Like, I think it is definitely better. Um, and then I guess it's obviously different in training. Like you might be trying to increase fat oxidation rates and all the rest of it. But I think in races, it's a no brainer to use 120 grams an hour, even though this study does it, it, like does state that, you know, it's not gonna spare your liver glycogen that much. I feel like it might just allow you to do more power because you just can burn more carbohydrate. Um, so yeah, I think that would be the conclusion of this paper, but it'd be interesting to see um, what they come up with um, and yeah, so basically just whack some sugar water in your bowl and you'll be a